Hi everyone. Welcome. Ladies and gentlemen. Today. We shall be looking into what is a prophetic word. And after that, some strong prophetic words for you from our pastor. So sit tight and watch till the end. God bless you. May we now invite our pastor to come over to the podium. Thank you. Thank you. What is a prophetic word? Prophetic words or prophecies, in the context of the Christian faith, is the act of delivering or passing down a message from God, as is received from God or making decrees or declaration based on the word of God, and the authorities bestowed on us by God, by the virtue of our status or relationship with God. In the book of Amos chapter 3 verse 7, the Bible says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants the prophets. In the book of Job chapter 22 verse 28, the Bible says, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Also in the book of Matthew chapter 18 verse 18, the Bible says, I tell you the truth, whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Prophecies or direct messages from God, can come to us in our dreams or in vision. It can also come as an inspiration when we study the Word of God. At times it can come as a prompting from the Holy Spirit. Direct prophecies from God can also come to us any time any day. Other things like prayer and fasting, meditation in God's Word, being in the Spirit and concentration could also catalyze prophecies. For instance, John, couldn't receive the vision of the Revelation, until the day he was in the Spirit. Revelation chapter 1 verses 10 to 11, says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice, as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and, what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Theotera, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. We see from the scriptures, until the day he, John, was in the Spirit, he could not see those visions. Being in the Spirit triggers a vision, which results in prophecy. Also, the Bible makes it clear that the Bible, is the more sure word of prophecy. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 19 We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn, and the day star arise in your hearts. This clarification is necessary and important. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 22, the Bible says, When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass. That is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. And in the book of Jeremiah 28 verses 15 to 16, the Bible says, Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah, the Lord hath not sent thee, but thou makest this people to trust in a lie. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth, this year thou shalt die, because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. While those are proofs, of the existence of presumptuous speakings, and outrightly lying and disinformation, in the name of prophecies. They were not as rampant and in the magnitude, that we are witnessing today. This has therefore made the clarification very necessary. So that prophecies could be vetted, or proven for a possible acceptance or otherwise. Because, for any prophecy to be adjudged, to have come from God, it must. Firstly, pass all the tests of conformity with the Word of God, the Bible. It has to be vetted with the Bible. For Bible is the more sure word of prophecy. Any prophecy or prophecies that fail this test, or that violent the written words of God in the Bible, should not be accepted, as they cannot be truly from God. Jesus confirms this in the book of John chapter 10 verse 35, when he says, that the scriptures cannot be broken. Therefore, any prophecy that breaks the scriptures, by the way of contradiction, or the way of violation, is not fit to be from God. The Bible is the more sure word of prophecy, 
the professorium where prophecies domicile. Secondly, the prophet must also be vetted. What is the track record of the supposed prophet? For we know that God doesn't use a sinner to pass messages to his people. In fact, is a long time held belief among the Jews that God doesn't hear sinners, let alone send them. John chapter 9 verse 31. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshipper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. However, there are exceptions. If the sinner first and foremost repents, and purge himself of the defilements occasioned by sin. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. So the life, personality, faith, and spirituality of the prophet have to be proven or vetted. Thirdly, a prophecy that emanates from the Lord must be devoid of fear, because scripturally, we know that God hadn't given us the spirit of fear, but of boldness. We can see this in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. God has consistently commanded us not to fear. So any prophecy that induces terror and fear, couldn't have emanated from God, because, God is not a God that terrorizes his children. Fourthly, God's prophecy must be pure, incorruptible, and peaceable. Any prophecy that takes peace away from you, the source is questionable. For we know our God to be the Prince of Peace. Psalms 85 verse 8. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people, and to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. John chapter 14 verse 27, the Lord says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So if a prophecy is not of peace, it is not of God. And fifthly, God has given us his spirit to lead, guard and guide us. If the spirit of God in us doesn't accept or approve of a prophecy, then suffice to say that is not of God. Romans 8 verse 16, the Bible says, The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Having said those, we must also understand that it is not every word of God that is prophetic in nature, some are instructions, and some are promises. The prediction of the future events from God, must surely come to pass at the appointed time. Because nothing can abort or annul the plans of God. The Bible confirms this in the book of Isaiah chapter 46 from verses 9 to 11. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else, I am God, and there is none like me declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country. Yea, I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass, I have purposed it, I will also do it. So the plans of God concerning certain inevitable future events, cannot be annulled or aborted by any being. You need not worry, or go asking what the will of God is for you. He has already made his will known to you in the Bible. Although that does not in any way means, that we should reject prophetic declarations of our life. Incidentally, it is our hope that you are enjoying the Word of God so far. If you are new here, consider subscribing, as we publish the Word of God on this channel every week just like this. Okay. Back to the man of God. Thank you. Although that does not in any way means that we should reject prophetic declarations of our life. As it has its roles to play, especially as regards triggering the manifestation of God's promises and prophecies over our lives and destinies. Prophetic declarations enhance and accelerate manifestations. Why declarations enhance our manifestations is that the enemy who the Bible refers to as the adversary, is always working against the manifestation of the prophecies in our lives. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9, For a great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. 
some of the wills of God or prophecies over us are contained in the scriptures, which we should know, keep declaring them until we see them become realities in us. For instance, in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, God says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So any prophecy that says the contrary didn't come from God. In the book of Psalms chapter 128 from verses 1 to 3, the Bible says, Blessed is every one that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands, happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house, thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verses 12 to 13, says, Though a sinner do evil an hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. Those and many more, are the sure prophecies of the scriptures concerning his people, and they are the mind of God concerning you. Any prophecy to the contrary is not of God and must be treated as such. We must keep declaring the prophecies, about us as declared in the Bible, until we see them come true in our lives. Therefore, to see prophecies fulfilled in our lives, God has given us some roles to play, in entrenching the fulfillment of prophecies concerning us. Some prophecies are conditional. For instance, in the book of Job chapter 36 verse 11, says, If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity, and their years in pleasures. The word if is a conditional statement. This means the fulfillment of the prophecy, is dependent on the meeting of the conditions attached. Therefore we have the following roles to play as Christians, in bringing prophecies to fulfillment in our lives. 1. Receiving or accepting prophecy. Only the prophecy you receive or accept profits you. John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave ye power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. 2. Believe in the prophecy. Until you believe it, you are not permitted to enjoy it. Luke chapter 1 verse 45. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. 3. Obedience or obeying the terms of the prophecy. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verses 1 to 2. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee, and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. 4. Devote irrevocably to the worship of God. Psalms 34 verse 10. The young lions do lack, and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. 5. Confessing and declaring it. God does to you what he hears you kept confessing. Numbers chapter 14 verse 28. Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. Job chapter 22 verse 28. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. 6. Meditating on the prophecy. As you meditate on prophecies about you, they are drawn closer to you. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. 7. Giving God praises and thanksgiving about it. When you praise God, creations are forced to yield to your desires. Psalm 67 verse 5 to 7. Let the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. 8. Believe in the prophetic declarations of your teaching priest. 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20. And they rose early in the morning, 
and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa, and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah. And ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established, believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. 9. Keep giving testimony of God's kindness. Testimony is prophetic, every testimony is a pointer to your heritage also. It is also a spiritual seed with the power to replicate itself. For what God promises to one he also promises another. Psalms 119 verse 111 Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. Wow, those are how to get prophecies from God fulfilled. Now, let us pray. Father Lord, I thank you. Because you have hidden these truths, from the acclaimed wise, and have revealed it to us your children, which I am one of them. Dear Lord, I am truly grateful. Father as I prophesy to my listeners this hour, let none of my words fall to the ground like in the words of Samuel. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I prophesy unto you, my dear listener. Like in your word in Psalms 102 verse 13. Thou shalt arise, and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her, yea, the set time, is come. I decree and declare unto you, that the time has come for you to be favored. The favor that will pay for your entire life labors locates you now. In the name of Jesus, you will not plant and others will reap. You will no longer labor in vain. Today marks the end of lack, penury, delays, slavery, and servitude in your life and family. In the name of Jesus, you will live long to enjoy the fruit of your labor. As the number of the years of a tree, even so, shall the number of your years be. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, shout Amen and believe, to receive it. Amen. We appreciate you immensely for joining us today to share the Word of God. We share the Word of God on this channel every week and you are invited to be one of us. Here is another video titled, Morning Prayer to Start Your Day with God. Carefully hand-picked for you to watch next. Click on the video to watch now, for we believe that it will enrich you immensely. Also, if you are new here, consider subscribing. And leave a comment in the comment box telling us you have subscribed. We will definitely respond to you immediately. God bless you.